Without a doubt, this has probably been the craziest week in Microsoft's history. Happy Friday, friends. Happy Friday. It's, it's the end of the week. It's the end of the week. It, it's Friday. How can you not be excited? It's Friday in what has been, and I know I've said this before, there's a busy week. There's a lot going on. I think we have set a new bar for what is an exceptionally crazy week in the world of Microsoft. And and I don't say that lightly. And I mean, I'm comparing that to stuff like when they got nailed for the browser ballot box, a bunch of other stuff, Steve Ballmer leaving, Satya Nadella taking over, Bill Gates and everything. Like this has been an insane week. In a nutshell, Windows got reorged, Microsoft held a, a Surface Hardware AI event, and Xbox accidentally posted an 18 month roadmap all in a single week. So there is a lot to talk about, a lot to dive into. So let's kick it off with the Surface AI event that happened this week. So yesterday, Microsoft went on stage in New York and talked about the future. And I'm gonna tell you, this wasn't their best event. We'll, we'll get through some of that, but I think it partially is because we kind of knew what to expect, but Microsoft did have a couple things, but it was still more of, it was a very muted event. Anyways, Microsoft did announce that on uh, the 26th, so next week, I guess it depends on when you're listening to this, Windows 23 H2 will be coming. Now, the big feature that is coming in this is Copilot. Now, Microsoft at this event rebranded Co like Windows Copilot to everything is just going to be called Copilot. It doesn't matter where it exists. If it's in Office, it's Copilot. If it's in Windows, it is Copilot. So Copilot is coming. Not too much, honestly, really new showing off there. It's still that same bar that eats half of your desktop, or not half, but like a third of it, or maybe a fourth of your desktop, depending on the resolutions, whatever. Uh, pops out and you can ask it questions and do sorts of stuff. Uh, Paint is getting it updated. It's now going to support layers and background removal. Photos now has background blur. Snipping tool can now do text extraction. Uh, Clipchamp now has auto compose. Notepad will now start automatically saving and remembering like what was open when it was closed. Uh, Outlook for Windows is now a thing. It's kind of shipping with the product. And uh, the new modern file explorer, which there's a lot of, <laughs> it's modern. It's not necessarily more performant, but we'll see if they get there. Uh, is going to be shipping and also Windows backup are the highlighting features. That's actually, candidly, a pretty big update for Windows 11. For Windows 11, that's pretty big. Uh, you know, considering we've been getting these things uh, fairly frequently, that's a that's a pretty big update. On the Surface side, there's effectively uh, four products. So you got the Surface Laptop Studio 2, which will start at $2,000 dues. It will feature a 13th gen Intel i7 and up to 4060 graphics. You will be paying... Uh, about 3,500-ish bucks if you want to get the 4060 option. And there's various RAM configurations, 16, I think all the way up to 64 gigs of RAM potentially. And a lot of storage just depends on uh, what you want. Surface Laptop Go 3 was announced and it's got a great price point. It's 799 as the starting. It is 12th gen Intel, which is a bummer, but it is Core i5 and Iris Xe graphics. It does start at 799, which is a, I don't, the price point is fine. The reason why I'm kind of like hesitant tent or sad I should say is this would have been a killer back to school product right surface laptop go like 799 that is great here's your kid going off to college here's your kid in school like price point laptop and that market is now a year away like and Microsoft completely missed it so maybe it'll be good for the holidays maybe I'm wrong Microsoft has the data or they missed their own internal shipping deadline doesn't matter either way uh, Microsoft that that is coming the October 3rd same with the laptop studio 2 surface go 4 you can't buy one unless you are a corporate entity. That, that was kind of expected, but it's a commercial only product. So yeah, the Surface Go, rest in peace. It doesn't look like we're getting any more entry level tablets from Microsoft, at least for now. And then the other one, which I don't think was leaked or announced or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Surface Hub 3 is now, I think you can now pre-order it. I don't know if it's actually general available. Uh, this supports Microsoft's actual rotation. So if you remember everything was promised about the Surface Hub 2S, the Hub 3 kind of actually finally makes that a reality. 50 and 85 inch model options. We don't have a price, but the 2S did start at 9K. So it's not going to be cheap. Now, the biggest news out of this entire Microsoft event was the fact that Panos Panay was not there. And why wasn't he there, Brad? He wasn't there because on Monday it was announced that he is leaving, actually probably I think has left the company. And so this is a massive thing because the Windows is getting reorged. And if you're not familiar with that terms, it means the person who's leading it is no longer there and, and it's being reorged or reorganized, which has 
lots and lots and lots of potential impact. First off, let's jump into the history machine as I get something off my face that was causing me to itch. Let's jump in the history machine. Uh, when Windows 10 was going to come out, or did come out, an individual named Terry Meyerson was running Windows. And Terry Meyerson was on the senior leadership team. And then Windows 10 came out and Terry left. He, he started a different company. He's left Microsoft. Uh, Windows 10 was doing great. And Microsoft let Windows 10 kind of stagnate for a little bit. And it was also not on the senior leadership team. Windows 10 was broken up in a couple different groups. I think some of the back end componentry was done by Azure. And some of the front end was done elsewhere. But anyways, the important point was that when Panos got appointed the leader of Windows, that all converged back into one entity, Panos's team, right? He was doing service hardware, Windows was all there, front end, back end, the whole thing was part of one entity, and Panos was sitting on the senior leadership team. Now that Windows is being broken back up again, Yusuf Mahedi is leading one part, then there's some engineering parts and things. It just, there's not a singular leader of Windows again. Now on the external side, it's gonna be Yusuf. That's who you're probably gonna be seeing a lot of. The problem here is that Yusuf also oversees a lot of other things like Bing AI and other consumer services. The point being is that it's not his whole job, right? That he is not the only representative of Windows. And I'm wondering what's actually gonna to happen to Windows again. It, does it truly have senior leadership recognition despite the fact that it makes billions of dollars every quarter? What's the future of Windows, right? So these are the questions that we don't really know. Um, is this gonna impact the release of Windows 12, right? We were expecting a Windows 12 next year, but when you have new leadership come in, of course they're gonna to wanna to put their own style and flair on what is happening. They're not gonna let the old guy dictate their plans, right? Even though they're already steamrolling downhill, they wanna put their own, they're gonna be responsible for the release. So why not make it theirs? We don't really know. There's a lot of like balls juggling in the air as we try to figure out what's going to change. How's it going to change? How quickly is it going to change? Is Microsoft going to go to finally maybe one update per year? Now that Panos is at maybe this chaotic, we're shipping features every three minutes is going to finally go away and that corporate customers are finally going to get their wish. I don't really know. The other big questions are is, was Panos pushed out? Was he told to leave? Considering it sounds like he has another position, it does seem like it is plausible that maybe this was him leaving on his own accord. We know that hardware sales, especially on the surface side, haven't been exceptional, but granted the entire industry has been sort of rough. You gotta put Apple on, on the side, but other OEM partners, that has been challenging. We've also learned that on the surface side that Microsoft is uh, cutting back on a lot of their product, right? They're not shipping these wild and crazy things anymore. They're not, the Surface Duo, like the, those things, the Surface Neo never shipped. Uh, the Surface updates this year were really just, hey, here, there's some new chips. And so maybe the, the, the riskiness of the Surface business is finally over and they're just focusing on profitable products that ship in uh, decent volumes and that's just where they're gonna hang out and remove the margin items where they saw experiments like the Surface Studio. Remember the big tilting screen, even though they got a ton of um, medium press conference. Coverage. So there's a lot happening inside the world of Windows that we don't know. And is Panos going over to Amazon to start up a PC business? Is Amazon going to ship a PC? We don't know. The, the thing that I'm not so confident about is Panos was a CVP. He was running a huge organization, impacting all sorts of people. And then he goes over to Amazon to work on Alexa devices. It doesn't feel like... I can't, I mean, maybe they should, maybe they rolled up with a dump truck full of money and that is a completely plausible scenario. And he's like, yeah, you know what? I am going to do that. And so that is what he has done. I don't quite know. We will, I think time will, as most scenarios lay out, will reveal the truth. It just doesn't, it just doesn't feel like a lateral move. Maybe it, it I don't know. We don't know what Amazon is doing, so I'm not going to speculate, but it just, it seemed abrupt is, is typically the, uh, the, uh, the scenario that I'm trying to get out. So anyways, big shakeup in Windows. Like this is, if you don't think that this is a big deal, I know a lot of people like Panos, not everybody did, but when you're at that level, not everybody's gonna like you, um, which is perfectly fine. He definitely had his impact. He was at Microsoft for 19 years. He definitely had a career in Redmond and definitely did a lot of stuff. Now it's a new era. It is a new era. And what this means is you don't know what to expect. The event that happened this week was very much a Panos led initiative right on the surface and Windows side. And maybe there was turmoil, right? Maybe Panos saw like what Microsoft was gonna do to Windows and despite his best efforts, they're like, no, we gotta do this. And he's like, okay, I'm out. Maybe that's, you know, that is the doomsday scenario that's playing out in my head. It's like, he saw what's happening and he's like, I don't wanna be any part of that. And I don't want my name on that. And so he, he walked away. We don't, we, we don't really know. We will find out eventually um, just through, you know, just through what happens in the industry. But here we are. I, I 
guys, I love Windows. Like, I love Windows. I work for a company. Uh, I run a software division that makes widgets for Windows. Like, Windows is my jam. And so when things like this happen, it really, it really mixes stuff up. It really mixes stuff up. So, you know, AI service hardware event, the Windows massive reorg. Let's go on to the gaming news, shall we? Because there was a little bit of gaming news this week. And by a little bit, I mean a metric ton of gaming news that has, again, really... So you got you got Windows kind of spiraling, not out of control. And then Xbox has its own moment, like a bad moment. And so the gaming news. So obviously the news this week is, regardless of what Microsoft announced officially on its blog channels, is that there was a, a snafu when part of their legal team uploaded documents to the FTC and what was expected to be private communication was made very, very public. And so Phil Spencer commented on this and acknowledged, so it's important to lay the groundwork that yes, these are in fact their documents. Obviously there's no question about that. However, they are a bit outdated. So, you know, things will change and I'm sure Microsoft's going to try to find unique ways to spin this up and sort of talk about things. But at the end of the day, if you're building this stuff and it's hardware related, it's you can't just turn the ship immediately because these things takes takes years to line all this stuff up and i i feel for these guys and i'm re- well aware i'm calling the kettle black there so what is coming we, brooklyn is the name of the xbox series x device that is coming without a disk drive microsoft is targeting a 499 price point no disk drive like i said uh the die shrink to six nanometers there's upgraded wi-fi there's bluetooth it's round it does appear to be the internals are smaller they're also more power efficient and so it's really well there's no performance changes expected phil spencer has been on the record saying we don't think a mid-cycle refresh is really needed and by refresh he means performance improvements not die shrink not more not efficiency improvements uh, of their building it um so this device is expected to come next year roughly a year from now then there's also Elliewood. if you think about it if the series x can make a smaller cpu and really shrink down its guts why wouldn't they do a series s because it's going to benefit from the same things and that's what the i believe is Elliewood will be it's likely going to have the same design but it will benefit again from that die shrink it'll have better power consumption and really, this device seems like it's more targeted at Microsoft helping get some margin out of their console because it looks like they're going to try to keep the same price point that they're selling for now. However, it's likely going to cost Microsoft less to build this thing. But that's that's you know sort of the nature of the scale uh, of how these things work. There's also a new controller coming called Siebel. Siebel. I don't know. You guys know I'm terrible at pronouncing things. This is a new controller. This has uh, all the connectivity you would ever need. So Xbox Play. If Xbox Play Anywhere was a controller. It would be this one. It connects directly to the cloud uh, from you know from device, much like the Google Stadia controller. Then it has Bluetooth. It has the Xbox Connect. So effectively, you can play on your Xbox. Then you can connect directly to the cloud and play uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming. You can connect it to your phone. It connected to your PC. It really just it's one controller to rule them all. It's supposed to have improved uh, and quieter impact. Like when you press, I was looking for an Xbox controller here on my desk. Um, here, here's one. So this noise, I, I don't know if it's going to come across. It's supposed to be reduced. Uh, it's supposed to just feel a little bit more premium, but it's not as premium as the say, as say the Elite controller. There's actually the core controller, which is what the controller is that ships with the Xbox. And then there's this device, which they refer to as premium. And then there's the Elite controller, which is higher up on the scale. So be on the lookout again. That would likely be coming next year. When you look at all the documents, remember that Microsoft is a fiscal year six months ahead. So they are in fiscal year 24 right now. Uh, next year will be fiscal year 25. Also, Super interesting, the documents show. Now, keep in mind, take this as a pinch of salt, which I'll explain. It says that the Series X uh, sells about 75% of the consoles, and the Series X makes up about 25%. Now, these numbers were from uh, early in 2022, and we don't know if it was only for a specific month or sales to date or something like that. But this is the first any sort of documentation that really says the split between the Series S and X. So it's almost, it's a, you know what, you're selling 75 Series S's for every 25 uh, Series X's is a huge gap. But it makes sense though, right? That lower price point, that entry level product is really where Microsoft expected to sell a lot more. We don't know if the volume has increased. Remember, it was hard to find the Series X for a long time, especially in that time frame of 2022. It was hard to find them on the shelf, so that would really elevate the Series S, which Microsoft even acknowledged they were making more of. So it might be out of date. Other things. Uh, next Xbox is expected roughly in 2028. Keep in mind that, again, timelines will shift and change, and that's just how it works. 
But 2028, so you've got another five years in this generation, something like that, which feels about right. That's typically how these console sales work. And so that is like the nutshell version of all the stuff that leaked. There's a, a talk, uh, which I'll dive into probably in another video at a time, where Phil Spencer says, hey, look, if we don't hit our Game Pass metrics, there's a good chance that Xbox might cease to exist. Now, people are way 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 going crazy with this thing like phil spencer's like saying they're going to exit the business guys this is every business plan says look it, it could be azure right if azure doesn't meet a certain revenue threshold like they could exit the cloud business they're not going to obviously the cloud business is nothing microsoft would exit um at this point but if xbox if it goes to the point where microsoft spends 70 billion dollars on acquisitions actually more than that probably closer to like 80 90 billion dollars if you add up like all the acquisitions they've done and they can't get like true revenue growth out of it then microsoft has done everything it thinks it can to grow that number it didn't work out let's find another strategy maybe spinning it out i don't think xbox would cease to exist as a valuable asset but that is kind of the 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 thinking right it's like hey we have to be growing at this rate for this business to make sense inside of microsoft that's what he's getting at i don't think they're going to be walking away from that anytime soon now if all of that wasn't enough next week is expected uh that's next week seems like a plausible timeline that we're going to see a cma ruling based on the, the the drippage from the tea leaves if you will and so it's like an insane amount of information. Like people were still tr working through all of the Xbox documents, still trying to figure out like what is going on with Windows. Like how are those plans going to change with new leadership? And then trying to understand like this new Surface world that we live in where Surface is just going to, it's, I, I, the, I'd hate to think that Microsoft is going to kill Surface and this is like way out of the gaming news, but something to keep your eyes on and for people who've made it this far, Something to keep your eyes on, like truly in the surface world. There's two people. There's Rolf Groen and Stevie Batish. Those two, it was like Penos and then it was like those two guys. If Stevie and Rolf leave Microsoft, if they leave Microsoft, I think that's a pretty big sign that Surface might be like truly kind of like, yeah. Um, I hope that Microsoft does not get rid of Surface. However, they're, they're focusing their efforts on the profitable product. And so, yeah, what a freaking crazy week guys like seriously and this is just this is one week you've had like three major events which would each be a highlight inside their own week but have them all shoved into one so yeah still still trying to marinate all of this stuff completely candid so on to the questions of the week, my friends. Now, candidly, I am recording this again on Thursday night, so I need to maybe start posting the questions earlier. Actually, I recorded it last week, Thursday, I think it was last week, Thursday evening, because um, I have thing, uh, something on Friday morning, and I actually realized I like doing it on Thursday evenings a little bit better. I don't know. I just, for whatever reason, so I might start recording this late Thursday nights, like 10 o'clock like I am now, uh, and then posting it in the morning. So, Think about just that in terms of questions. So when people post them, I, I try to get to them all, but it can't. So I always post them out. I tweet it out. I post it in the link. Uh, you can find me on Twitter or X or whatever it's called, BD Sams. And so let's go. Confused Geek with two questions in. He says, so next week the ABK, ABK is done or over. Any chance Microsoft leaves England if the CMA doesn't change its mind? Weird for deal to die because of a singular country. I don't think uh, I would be shocked if this doesn't wrap up i'm not saying it's completely fully wrapped up next week but i think we will get to the point where it might be able to close we will see and don't hold me to that it depends what the cma comes out with right they've already thrown wrenches left and right however the full expectation is that microsoft's revised deal is going to get this through and that's what we would expect to hear I don't think that this deal is going to die because of a single country. I really don't. Now, so what would happen next week if the CMA says, look, we've done a review, hopefully they're not Hopefully they're not going to come back and say, here's the next court date, and then we will do it off that court date. Um, hopefully it comes out and just says, yes, we are going to approve this re revised deal and then get it signed off, and then that would might take a week or two or something like that, and then Microsoft could officially close. And then he Confused Geek says, any chance Xbox Game Studios starts porting games to iPhone, or does Apple need to OK Game Pass first? I think that could be a standoff between Microsoft and, or Xbox and Apple, right? Apple on stage showed off a lot of games. There's a lot of people, Apple talks about the Xbox, the iPhone somewhat cheekily being like the best gaming console uh which you know by volume of people probably some truth to that 
So uh, I don't know if Microsoft will start porting it. I think they wouldn't hold off on that until they can figure out if they can get Game Pass on the product because that would sort of undermine their entire pitch, right? Yes, Microsoft wants to make the money from having games on these platforms and when they buy ABK, it'll come a little bit more diluted a bit uh, because they will have content over there. However, if Microsoft truly thinks they're going to be able to get a game store in the near future, they would be kind of foolish to do that now because then they would lose some of their uh, gravitas for why people should download that. So I don't think Microsoft has written it off or said they're not going to do it. I think they're waiting to see if they can get a game store up and running. Alaskan Jackson says, I'm sure you've addressed this before, but I wasn't paying attention. I forgot. No blame. No blame. Uh, what is the end game pun intended for Xbox hardware? At some point, it will just be a control device with everything else in the cloud. Also, will the Bengals win a game of season? Rude second question, geez. Uh, but the first part, I th I do think the end game, Phil Spencer talked about, I think in the linked leaked emails, he said consoles are a very core experience for us and that's the easiest way for them to get people in the game pass. So it appears that consoles are gonna continue to be the primary driver of Game Pass sub, uh, subscription sales. I think that is the current end game, right? It's consoles make those sales. Now, the question becomes is like, what does a console become? Does a console just become like an Apple TV box where it's like truly streaming and there's just a modest amount of hardware locally? Not really sure. Not really sure. We will find out though. Uh, Microsoft clearly still thinks that consoles are important. I think we might see... You know, it's very hard to predict. Like, what is 15 years from now does an Xbox look like? I think we will continue to see Microsoft make Xbox hardware. I think that is something that will continue to happen. The thing that might change is, one, they might shrink in size quite literally um, just because we now have smaller, faster, more powerful chips. But they might just be truly just boxes that a controller connects to and then it's sort of augmented because Microsoft is going to want to drive down those console costs as cheap as possible. Imagine if an Xbox console could play... Call of Duty, Halo, all those games in 4K, 4K, 60 frames per second on a box that costs 49 bucks. Microsoft figures out how to make that happen. They would love to do that. So that's where I think they try to go. Are the Bengals going to win a game this year? I don't know, guys. For those who aren't aware, I'm a huge Cincinnati Bengals fan. And last year we started 0-2. This year we started 0-2. Although last year's 0-2 felt better than this year's 0-2. Uh, they play Monday night. I don't know. Like, if we don't win Monday... It's going to be trying to reboot the NFL season. Just like, can we unplug Joe Burrow and plug him back in or something? I don't know. Rafiq145 says, Hi, do you think that Copilot and AI will be big game changer that everyone is waiting for Windows? Because for now, I'm not very excited for what I saw. I think that's very fair. Because part of me think, part of me feels just, I think about how I use ChatGPT currently at, at, in my personal life and at work. I use it a lot for work, like for various things. Like if you're stuck, uh, I write a light up, use Python a fair bit. ChatGPT is fantastic with Python for those who, you don't even have to know how to use it. Just tell ChatGPT to write your Python script. It does it for you. I use it a lot for work. Personal life, not so much. So we'll see. Um, to me, these features manifest themselves in ways that are inside of applications better, right? I think like what Adobe has done with their generative fill, I think is a very good use of AI. It's not explicitly like you go to a prompt, type it in. Mid Journey, another decent one. And so we see these things sort of bleed in, but like how often are you going into paint and thinking like, man, I need to change the background, give me something creative. I'm not saying it's not gonna happen, but it feels like uh, AI is like more pepper than it is like the main course, if that makes sense, right? It's just in little spots and it helps out. And maybe over time that continues to grow or from the consumer's pr perspective, this thing is a complete flop. It, it, there, you can't rule that out, right? Look at other things that have happened with uh, Windows, right? They had My People, they have Timeline, other things like that, that just Microsoft shoved in there and they went absolutely nowhere. GPT feels a little bit more robust in its use case. So we'll see, we'll see. but. Uh, are people going to go crazy? And is this suddenly going to make Windows like say Linux is dead, Mac OS is dead, it doesn't have ChatGPT integrate? No, not even, not even close, not even close. Uh, MNB Bears or MN Bears guy says, "I'm in the market for a new Xbox controller. Curious the price point and release date of the leaked Xbox controller earlier this week. If it's really coming out in May of 2024, I may just wait for that to be released. Or if there's an Elite Series 3, I, I, I may wait for that too. I don't think an Elite Series 3 was 
in the documentation that was posted. Here's the thing. When you say you need a new controller, or you're in the market, like, is this something you want or something you need, right? If it's something you want and you can wait, then yeah, I would definitely wait for uh, the Siebel Seibel controller. I would. I, I truly would wait. Now, if you're using a controller and your thumbstick is off at like a 45 degree angle, buy it today, right? You're putting off at minimum, because keep in mind, Phil Spencer even said these dates are out, or these plans are outdated. This controller, in theory, could never arrive. It could not arrive in for a year from now, right? There could be manufacturing delays. They might have bad testing, bad software. Who knows? There's supposed to be an app companion on the device. That thing might not materialize either. If you need a controller now, now is a good time to get one. If you want something, then maybe just hold off. Um, but it's really hard to say because it, it just depends. Like if your stuff's broken and, and you got like controller or stick drift then get one now there's a new the the new purple one looks great the astral purple or whatever there you go mr pki wrapping it up as he likes to do he says okay panos moving to amazon has been huge news for windows this week what do you think are the pending reorgs that have been rumored as part of his departure this is what I was getting at. So Mr. PKI very clearly in tune with what uh, happens inside the world of Microsoft. So like you get a little nervous when you see the Windows side land under the guy who also is dealing with Bing and chat and marketing and advertising and like that side of the house because it's like, hey, did Panos walk away because Microsoft wanted to shove more ads into Windows? He's like, that's going to ruin it. And so like he was the last guy to hold the sword in the ground and say like, no, we are not doing this. So they kind of pushed him out, right? That sort of thing. It's unfortunately it's too early to say because we haven't seen any decisions come out of the Windows org yet, right? This is less than a week old, so I'm not expecting a big upheaval of information yet. However, we should expect to see that the ship turn, right? In one way or another. When you have new leadership, the, it's very rare for the, the boat to stay in the same direction that it was. So we got to wait to see how Yusuf and Rajesh and all these other guys who are now have more way in. Uh, really lead the window ship because you got to remember Panos, even if, like him or dislike him, he had a big presence and he had good authority inside the company and he was respected on a lot of things. And so when he said, this is what we're doing, then that's what happened. There wasn't that internal fighting right now. I, I fully expect that there's probably, maybe it's over. There was some sort of power grab, right? You have corporate vice president saying, I want to run windows. I want to run surface, that sort of stuff. Yusuf landed a bunch of it. Other people landed other aspects. We don't know. We don't know yet. So there's too much unknown to make any real tried and true decisions. What I don't, I hope that Microsoft ships a Windows 12 next year, and I hope that Windows continues to evolve. I do hope that they slow down and just have one update per year. I, I don't want to say do it like Apple does, because you could say do it like Google does, right? Just one update per year, all the features at that time, and then just ship. Don't do these multiple updates per year sort of thing. So I don't know, guys. I really wanted to record this because it's it's a Thursday night, like I noted earlier. But it was just, it, this this week is crazy. And then you couple in ABK might be happening next week, and like so, it's like you have just it, this is like a year's worth of stuff in a week. In it, it, insane, insane. So hopefully you guys enjoyed like this kind of week because it's not often we get the smattering of this stuff across all the different orgs. It was right up my alley. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I guarantee you Microsoft did not enjoy uh, about a third of it, right? Uh, maybe even ha even two thirds, right? They probably didn't enjoy Panos leaving and probably, and we know they didn't enjoy FTC leaving, but they probably enjoyed their uh, keynote event on Thursday. So there you go, guys. That wraps it up for this week. And as always, my friends, thanks for tuning in and make sure to keep it subscribed here because the only BS on this podcast is me. <laughs>